Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janalami Dabu Jau Kanaka Vedato Sankirtana Kipitaro Kamalai Tachavi Shambhava Vijibaro Jigadama Palo Andeji Gat Pietaro Kuravataro E Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitananda Shiatvaiti Gradha Sivasa De Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Ram Hari Hari This is the Sima uh, <coughs> Chaitanya Charitamrita, Majulila, chapter 18, verse 110. 110 to 113. Yeah. Vindavane hoilo tumi Krishna obotar. Doma deki sarva loka holo nishta. The people then said, You have appeared in Vrindavan as an incarnation of Krishna. Just by seeing you, everyone is now liberated. Text 111. Prabhu kohi Vishnu Vishnu iha nakahi ba. Jiva dhame Krishna gyan kabu na kariba. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately exclaimed, Vishnu, Vishnu, don't call me the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A jiva cannot become Krishna at any time. Don't say such a thing. Don't even say such a thing. Purport. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately stated that a living being, however exalted he may be, should never be compared to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's preaching protests the monistic philosophy of the Mayavad school. The central point of Krishna consciousness is that the jiva, the living entity, can never be accepted as Krishna or Vishnu. This viewpoint is elaborated in the following verses. Text 112. Sanyasi chit kana jiva kirana kana sham. Sanyasi chit kana jiva kirana kana sham. Sodai swaya purna hoya suryopam. A sannyasi in the renounced order is certainly part and parcel of the complete whole, just as a shining molecular particle of sunshine is part and parcel of the sun itself. Krishna is like the sun full of six opulences, but the living entity is only a fragment of the complete whole. 113. Jiva Ishvara Tattva Kabu Nahisham. Valad Agni Raji Joy Chase Bullingira Jiva Ishvara Tatwa Kabhu Nohi Sham Valad Agni Raji Joy Chase Bullingira Kam Jiva Ishvara Tattva Kabho Nahi Sham Galat Agni Rashi Jai Ches Pulingera Kam
Somebody else? Jiva, a living being, Ishvara Tattva, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Kabu, at any time, Nahe, Na, Shama, equal, Jvalat Agni Rashi, large flame, Doiche, as, Pulingya, of a spark, Khan, fragmental portion. Translation, a living entity and the absolute tr absolute personality of Godhead are never to be considered equal, just as a fragmental spark can never be considered the original flame. Purport. Mayavadi sannyasis consider themselves Brahman, and they superficially speak of themselves as Narayan. The monist disciples of the Mayavadi, Mayavad school, known as Smarta Brahmanas, are generally householder Brahmanas who accept the Mayavadi sannyasis as Narayan incarnate. Therefore, they offer their obeisances to them. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately protested this unauthorized system, specifically mentioning that a sannyasi, chitthana jiva, is nothing but a fragmental portion of the Supreme. In other words, he's nothing more than an ordinary living being. He is never Narayan, just as a molecular portion of sunshine is never the sun itself. The living entity is nothing but a fragmental part of the absolute truth. Therefore, at no stage of perfection can a living entity become the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Mayavad viewpoint is always condemned by the Vaishnava school. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself protested this philosophy. When the Mayavadis accept sannyasa and consider themselves Narayan, they become so puffed up that they do not even enter the temple of Narayan to offer respects, for they falsely think themselves Narayan himself. Although Mayavadi sannyasis may offer respects to other sannyasis and address them as Narayan, they do not go to a Narayan temple and offer respects. These Mayavadi sannyasis are always condemned and are described as demons. The Vedas clearly state that living entities are subordinate part and parcels of the Supreme. Eko bahunam yo vidyati kama. The Supreme being Krishna maintains all living entities. Om Ajnana Tamananda Shigana Jana Shalakaya Chaksana Narikam Jana Shasmaya Shigana Veno Ashi Chaitanya Marabhishtam Svapitam Jena Bhutale Vrayam Rupagatam Mahyam Dadati Sapadam Kritam Jiva Ishvara Tattva Kabu Nahi Shama Jalad Agni Raji Joichi Spulin Yelakam a living entity and the absolute personality of God are never to be considered equal, just as a fragmental spark can never be considered the original flame. So here in uh, Vrindavan, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this pastime was going on that uh, he was being addressed as Vishnu himself. And... Uh, as it turns out, uh, he is Vishnu, but so, but he's taking the part of a devotee, and uh, therefore he's protesting vehemently against this idea. So when Mahaprabhu was passing through Benares on the way to Mathura, his close. Associates Chandrasekhar and Tapa Mishra had informed him that the Mayavadis there, they had been criticizing him and his chanting like that. And they were very upset. They weren't able to defeat these Mayavadi sannyasis. So Mahaprabhu went to, Vindav went to Vindavan, Mathura Vindavan, and he just kind of ignored the situation. But on the way back, you will find 
that he smashed in a very wonderful way. In fact, the five conversations uh, that, that we understand are very important in Chaitanya Charmita. One of them is with Prakash Ananda. So that Prabhupada, he printed the book, we remember, those of us who are old timers, that Prabhupada wanted that book out uh, before the rest of the Chaitanya Charmita came out. The, Chaitanya, uh, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya had been out, but it, in that book it couldn't go into very detailed depth of the conversation, which is so important, between Mahaprabhu and Prakashananda. So therefore, Prabhupada took that seventh chapter of Adi Lila and translated it first and then had it printed entitled uh, Panchatattva, Lord Chaitanya and Five Features of the Panchatattva. Panchatattva eka vastu nahi kichube. And one of the verses there said, they're non-different. <clears throat> Although they're non-different, still uh, they separate them, separate them, they're separate, just to taste rasa, rasasvadite, tabuta, be uh, bay the different types of rasa tasted therein. So, in the beginning of that chapter, is describing how Panchatattva Mile <clears throat> they enjoy amongst themselves, and how there are, although there are two Prabhus, there are two Prabhus. Eka Mahaprabhu are, there are two. Uh, Prabhu is Eka Mahaprabhu, and there's only one Mahaprabhu. The two Prabhus are Nityananda and Advaita. So in this way, the Tattva, the Panchatattva, Panchatattva, Krishnam, what is the verse? Tatatmakam Krishnam, Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam, Bhakta Avataram, Bhakta Kyam, Namami, Bhakta Shakikam. This verse is explained there in that seventh chapter, how he expands. And so, this is established by Kaviraj Goswami. He's expert at establishing in a very poetic manner. So sometimes we lament that Kaviraj Goswami says many times, I could have written much more, I could have said much more, I heard much more, but I couldn't. Show. But of course, the jiva, living entity, devotees, they take great pleasure in hearing a chanting, Chaitanya Chaitamita. Chinchitam chinchitam bhaktas chaitanya charita. I always think of this chaitanya charita. Kaviraj Goswami says, shuyatam shuyatam bhaktas. Always hear it, always speak it, and always think of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. And uh, so Mahaprabhu, when he was hearing this criticism of himself, he simply smiled. Prabhu Hasi, many times, several times, it says Prabhu Hasi. Now, Tapan Mishra and Chandrasekhar, they were very upset. They wanted to commit suicide, in fact. They couldn't bear to hear this. Uh, of course, they didn't associate closely, but they could hear it. You know, that Prakashananda was the leader of the sannyasis. And when he heard about the activities of Mahaprabhu, he criticized very sharply. What is this? He's, he's a sannyasi in our line, you know, Shankaracharya. And he's going around with all these babukira sani, he's going around with all these babukas. I mean, in, their, in their lingo, babukas are just like really sentimental. And they are very proud, Prabhupada mentions here, of, uh, I don't know if he mentions here, but he mentions many times. And to be a Mayabadi sannyasi, you have to already be expert in Sanskrit especially grammar. You cannot be, you know, it's very limited. Not everyone can become a sannyasi. Generally, they have to do like that. Uh, so, but Shankar Chai himself, in Dukrina Karane, he said, Nahi Nahi Rakshati, Dukrina Karane, in his famous stotra, he has one famous, the most well-known verse amongst the Vaishnavas, where he says, Baju Govinda, Baju Govinda, Baju Govinda, Muhammate. He's telling his own followers, to worship Govinda. Uh, and Govinda Madhikurusham Tamaham Bhajami. 
Furthermore, he says, your, all your jugglery, Dukwin, all your verbal roots, jugglery, and all this, it won't protect you at the time of death. Dukwin Akami. He made, so of course, he said many other things. <laughs> uh, Jagat, uh, what does he say? Maya, that my, the material world is Brahma, and Brahma is, Brahman is eternal, and the material world, everything else is Maya. Maya Varma Sat Shastram Prichanam Bhauta Mujate. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was preaching to the, these Maya bodies. He was quoting from Puranas and so many things. So one of those slokas is Maya Varma Sat Shastram Prichanam Bhauta Mujate. That this Maya philosophy that you're professing is simply Buddhism just covered. And Kaviraj Goswami says that. Veda Shraya Nashtika Vad Bodhike Nashtik. Nashtik means atheism. The Mayavadi, they still make some pretense at being very religious, so they don't, it's a big insult if you say that they're Buddhist. They don't, there's two types of Mayavadi, and they don't have anything to do with the Buddhist Mayavadi. Because Shankaracharya's mission, Agya Kori Das, according to Mahaprabhu, he's an order carrier. Uh, order carrier where Lord Shiva was saying he will come as this uh, Shankaracharya and bring about the Kali Yuga. This is his mission. By, and Jivatma Paraya, uh, uh, Paratma Jivaya, uh, that the Paramatma and the Jiva are non different, which is not logical. We don't see that. Uh, Krishna says in the Gita in so many places how he says these kings all are separate they were here before they'll always exist and you all individuals they're struggling very hard the jivas. Krishna is not struggling uh, he's independent. So when Mahaprabhu arranged it on his way back to Benares, the devotees were more and more frustrated and crying. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Bhakti Sananta Saraswati is explaining that somehow or other, in our mind, we don't think of Chandrasekhar. They're close associates of Mahaprabhu. We don't think of them as Kanishtas. But at least... Uh, from one angle, <laughs> they're said to be Kanishta because uh, uh, someone who is in the Majam stage, he should be able to confront the Maya bodies. Of course, we don't think that we are Sanskrit scholars and we can confront Maya bodies, and they also didn't think. So it's a very, it should make us also humble if, if Mahaprabhu's own associ close associates were considered like that. It's a very high grade, you're able to confront these Maya bodies. Um, I remember there were some Western hardcore Mayavadis. They came to Krishna Balaram Mandir in 77. They were Dutch guys. And they, they, knew, uh, they knew Prabhupada's book besides knowing their own uh, philosophy. They could quote. They were sitting in the room with Yasodananda, who was Swami at the time. And Yasodananda Swami was discussing Mayavad and quoting so many things. I lived in the room next to him. I was painting. And he was in the room. He used to do puja like for five hours a day. And, Chan Shloka, he was a super shloka guy, super, super duper. No shloka would go unlearned. <laughs> so when they came, somebody recommended, oh, you guys are my body, you want to argue? Then you go to see Yasodananda. And Pradumna was there, he was kind of watching from the doorway. He's a very funny guy. He was just watching like this. And I was watching. And they were going on for hours. And these guys could quote Prabhupada's book, but you are Prabhupada said on this shloka and this turport, and he was coming back. At the end, there was no conclusion. They got some prashada. Later on... <laughs> huh? Later on, we saw them outside. They were smoking. <laughs> the, you know, those guys, they know so many Sanskrit shlokas and they're smoking outside. Shaved heads, they had bald no -sika. So, I think, so, very funny. How they were going on like that. So, there's a very nice Leela in Anchalila. 
the fifth chapter, where Bhagavan Acharya, he kept recommending to Sarup Dhamadar because nobody could go directly to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to recommend anything. Or there were so many people writing. Imagine in those days there were many learned persons. Uh, for us, they would be very learned. But for Mahaprabhu and Sarup Dhamadar, mm, it is. Even the devotees were like Bhagavan Acharya. He was thinking this poet came from Bengal and he had this great elucidation, glorification of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So for two, two, three days, he was <clears throat> advising or he was saying to Sri Dhamma, you must hear this. <laughs> this uh, poet from Bengal, he has written this great, fantastic poem about Lord Chaitanya. You must hear it. And Sri Dhamma was very doubtful. He was, he was thinking, finally, because it was so persistent, he said, okay, 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 bring him here. Because nothing could go, he's the secretary of Mahaprabhu, everything had to be heard first by Sri Dhamma. Because I mean, Yadbat Tadbat, there's a term that means someone who writes, but it's not a court. They may be able to write something. For us, it would be amazing. But according to the very, very exalted authorities like Sri Dhamma, it is just talking something. He doesn't hear it, he wouldn't hear it. So. Because so many of these persons will want to present their poetry. Oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the most exalted person, please hear my poem, please hear my poem. No, can't go directly. No. Bhagavata Stane, you must hear from the Bhagavata. When this poet finally was able to, Sri Brahmana said, okay, now give me your introductory verse. So it's in, only the introductory verse finished, that's it. He said his introductory verse and he was stopped. Because in the introductory verse, he was explaining how Jagannath is a very nice wooden deity, he's glorifying. But now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is like the soul, living soul. He was, this is called Rasa Bas, overlapping mellow. Sometimes Rasa Bas is accepted. If one is very highly learned in this, he can understand how it will induce ecstasy, Krishna Prema. But in this case, Immediately, Sri Dhammar chastised him, said, you are a rascal. This is a nonsense poem. You know, but he saw that the Brahmin, the, this, this Brahmin poet was very upset. He looked very sad. He saw oh, being very, he also chastised Bhagavan Acharya. He said, but you are a coward boy. You don't, you don't mind hearing anything, but I cannot hear this. This is not right. You, you can accept, I can accept this. So he encouraged the Brahman by telling him, Jaha Bhagavata Stani. Um, he said, E Kanta E Ashraya Chaitanya Charame. With uh, one pointed devotion, if you understand Chaitanya Mahu, actually it's interesting because it says you have to understand Chaitanya Mahu, but he couldn't do it directly. But if you have faith, Mahaprabhu, you take one of his disciples, one of his followers, and you surrender wholeheartedly to his lotus feet, then you will understand this. Of course, we don't have a follow-up story that he, what happened to him. But he was given very strong instruction. Bhagavad, uh, Prabhupada used to quote this, uh, this sloka in his own way. He had a way of saying in a different way, Bhagavata uh, Stane. You have to, with Jaha Bhagavata Stane, how does Prabhupada say it? Yeah, Bhagavata Paragya, Bhagavata Stani. So Prabhupada said in his own Bengali word, which we like, Bhagavata Paragya, Bhagavata Stani. You want to understand this, you have to go, it's said differently by Kaviraj Goswami, but Prabhupada is on a high level of spontaneous love. He can say it in his own way. Many times he says something, Jojanati Tattata. He takes the Gita Shloka and says it in his own way, a little bit different. Of course, Prabhupada did whole Gita in Bengali, uh, huh? Gita Gan, which is still distributed in thousands, millions of copies all over Bengal. All Bengalis getting copies of Gita like this. So Prabhupada said in his own Bhagavata Bhargya Bhagavata Stane. You want to understand this? You have to go to the person Bhagavat. You cannot go directly to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but you have to have faith in Mahaprabhu. Then you can understand. So, but interestingly, uh, this happened a few times. 
that in uh, Chaitanya Media, you find that the devotees were very amazed. They all thought this very wonderful poetry, but only Swoop Dhammala. And Kaviraj Goswami says, anyone who understands the subtle rasas, they must have ha- heard it from someone who heard it from Srubh Dhammada, because no one else understood properly. He has the highest power on it. Of course, we were joking the other day, what about Rupa Goswami? But Rupa Goswami is also in, we could say, in tight with Srubh Dhammada. He was given, when he, he presented his poetry in the company of Sarvabhoma and Ramananda Roy and, of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu said, how does he understand this? Then Sri Dhamma said, oh, he's getting your special mercy. So sometimes, if you're Rupa Goswami, there's special mercy. But if you're Sri Dhamma, there are special. But uh, no one can just concoct anything. So Mayavadis, they are like Mayavadam, Asat Shastram. Their Shastras are considered Asat. Asat. They're not eternal Shastras. That uh, Shankaracharya says, uh, Eka Shloka, uh, he says, uh, I will give you one Shloka, and by that Shloka, uh, you will understand everything. And in that Shloka, he's only this one Shloka. He gives that uh, Jagat, what is it? Satyam, Brahma Satyam, Jagat, Jagat what? Jagad mitya, mitya. Mitya means false. The material world is false. So Rupa Goswami has the antidote for this. He describes that uh, uh, sambande, Krishna sambande, vairagyam, uh, utrite, this uh, yukta vairagya. It's considered very important. Sometimes I remember that how in 75, when the Front gate was complete, and Prabhupada had Murlidar and me, and uh, I know Parikshit, the artist. We had to go and write this. Of course, we don't know very much Sanskrit, <laughs> but we wrote it on the wall with Bhaktisanta had a picture of printing press and Madanga, the Briad Madanga. As a slogan, slogan. This is Prabhupada wanted that. I assume it's still there somehow. Already. So, very important verse. Uh, how does that verse start? Yukta, Yukta, Vairagya Muchite. How does that start? Huh? What? Anasakta Shivishyan Yitaanu Payan Yuta. So the my bodies they are not conversant in how to understand this material energy. Prapancha kataya bhujha hari sambandhi vastuna. Mamukshabi paritiago. Vairagyam falgam uchite. This is called falgu vairagya. Although they have here it says they're demoniac. The Brahmavadi is a different thing, but if uh, when Mahaprabhu was very concerned that these uh, what is it? Nindaka, Karmanishta, Nindaka, Paduya, Adam, all these categories were not surrendering. Understanding Krishna consciousness, he Chaturya Pa, Sabanishtarit Nistarite. Uh, Chaturya Pa. To deliver all of them, he took sannyas. Chabis uh, described when he was 24, he took sannyas. There's no need of Mahaprabhu to take sannyas. Yadadvaitam brahma panasari tarapyasa tanu ba yat mantirem pushas. Shadaishvaya, here is described shad, the Aishvaya. He Shadaishvaya, all the six opulences he has. Just like small thing he does, he arranged that the Brahman came and invited. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had no intention, or you can say he never met with the Mayabadis, but suddenly he induced this Brahman to come. The Brahman was a devotee. He, he invited Mahaprabhu, you come to my house for lunch tomorrow, the Prakashananda and so many of these, he must have had a big house. The Prakashananda had 60,000 followers. But anyway, at his house there was lunch. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there, uh, first thing they noticed that he only sat in the place where you know, my body, any, any sannyasis, they go barefoot. They'd wash your feet there. He sat only there. They were sitting in a higher place. So Prakashananda came and he said, How? He, he saw him sitting there. Why are you sitting there? Ihan Aishi Ihan Shunaho Shripa. 
Come here, come here with us. Why are you sitting in this low place? Oh, he said, oh, he a sannyasi. I'm a he. I'm a very low sannyasi. And my guru told me that I don't understand. Vedanta Adhika. Uh, he said, uh, Guru Mora Morka Deki He chastised me that I have no intelligence to understand. So, but when they were seeing Mahaprabhu, what were they seeing? Mahatejo Maya, Bapu. His body was Mahatejo Maya. The effulgence of thousands, millions of suns, it says. So they were, of course, they're very much into this effulgence of the Brahman, the undifferentiated Brahman effulgence. So when they saw that Mahaprabhu was putting, giving this effulgence, they were astounded. Uh, Jureya, Shavan, they said, our ears, when we hear you, we're very satisfied hearing your speech. And when we see you, our eyes, Nayan, very satisfied. But please come and tell us, you know. Though well, sometimes it is said there was no argument, that simply by that. But Prabhupada said, no, there was argument. <laughs> Still there was argument. Even one of Prabhupada's governors said there was no argument. Prabhupada said, nonsense, there was argument still. <laughs> so in his argument, which everyone should be familiar with, I've been reading that for the last 47 years. Still, I'm not so familiar, but I would like to read it. We can put a plug for Mother Narayana. I remember in 74, she was memorizing that chapter. Probably she still knows. Uh, because we didn't have whole Chaitanya Charmita, but we had that. And I could hear her in the Calcutta, in the other room and she was over and drilling these verses because it's such an important thing uh, so in those verses also is describing lutia kaya dia bandha bandara ujare ascharya bandara shata prema bare that the pancha tattva uh, when krishna was here he gave you know he gave some instruction you surrender to me but Mahaprabhu is Odarya, he's uh, Namo Mahabhada Nyaya, he's most of magnanimous. And so therefore, him, along with the Panchatatwa, they plunder the storehouse of love of God. So this is what's happening here. Can you imagine that Mahaprabhu was so ecstatic when he was in Puri, and then as he came gradually to get to Mathura and Vindavan, he was increasing hundreds and then thousands of times his ecstasy. So... Uh, who can imagine that? He says, ecstasy in Vrindavan was so great that uh, Balabhadra Bhattacharya and the other devotees, especially, he was so upset because Mahaprabhu, right after this, Mahaprabhu became so ecstatic, he jumped in the moon and nearly drowned. Well, who knows if he would drown? He could float 20 miles, he didn't drown in, to Konark and Puri, but they were thinking, see, they, want, they have this relation with Mahaprabhu. They think they're taking care of Mahaprabhu. So therefore, the ecstasy is always increasing. Ananda mudi vardhanam patipadam pranamita spada. The taste, we always want this unlimited taste. Na the trip. Bhuya katya tripti here, like Arjuna told Krishna. Please speak more and more. I never tire of hearing the ambrosial nectar words. We also never tire of hearing. This morning we're chanting the Goswami Ashtakam also. Anandam Bhardi, Anandam Bhardi, Nipano, Kaivalya Is that the verse? Anyway, they were delivering people from this mouth of liberation, the devouring mouth of liberation. How are they doing? Govinda Ganam Mitai. Papo Tapa Nekintano Tanupitam. Govinda Ganam Mitai. Those persons. So all these persons are described. Stri, Vida, Balak, Duva, Shabare, Dubai. Stri, the women. Everyone became ecstatic. Vida, the old, Balak, the children, uh, the lame, the blind, Anda, what is it? Uh, that verse. The blind, the lame, Pango, Anda, Gam. Everyone. But still, because these Mayavadis were trying to escape, they were very expert, actually, at escaping the loving network, Prem Vale of Mahaprabhu. He took sannyas, uh, particularly this mission to deliver the, these Mayavadis. And so he, he did it. 
and still we're putting forward the same philosophy because Mayavadi is a very dry, uh, described by Kaviraj Goswami that uh, Kaku Tusha, the uh, Gan, the Ganis, the Mayavadis are Ganis, let's face it, they're the big Ganis, they're simply studying, 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 studying Vedanta. So this is like the Kaka Tusha, like the crows taking the neem pale, the bitter neem fruits. Well, we not, neem is okay for medicine, but there's not nectar, let's face it. Nobody wants to eat it like nectar. Will you take neem fruits or will you take a wonderful feast, 35,000 preparations offered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? I don't think so. Uh, but the devotees, they're taking the, uh, the mango buds of nectar. Uh, and just like our Sarvabha Bhattacharya, he was also like this smarter Brahmin Mayavadi. So when, when Mahaprabhu came to his place and he wanted to instruct Mahaprabhu, first thing he said, why did you take sannyas anyway? I am always speaking with these sannyasis and they're all puffed up rascals. They think they're Narayana. <laughs> he knew that. And so he said, so they won't bow to anyone. They won't. You can read that in Chaitanya, Church, Chaitanya Bhagavad. It's a little different story, a little different angle of each other you get there than Chaitanya. Chaitanya Mita is heavy talk where you understand. Of course, we don't hear all seven days that Sarvabhama spoke, but we get... Uh, but in Chaitanya Bhagavat, it, it makes it almost sound like uh, Mahaprabhu asked him very humbly to give him some instruction. But he said, well, why did you take sannyas? This is simply, sannyasis are all puffed up. Namo Narayana Bhagat. Dandu Grahena Bhagat. Simply by taking Dandu, they think they become Narayana. But as we hear from Prabhupada from the very beginning, even a dog can chant the holy name. Sajjan Durjan Pangu Jara Andada. Dira Dira Jana. The Sajjan were the devotees. Durjan, the wicked rascal. Dira Dira Jana. Priyakaroho. But like Sanatana Goswami, the six were they're dear even to the Durjan. Mahaprabhu is dear even to the, you see Jagai Madai, or when Nitai was uh, goes back away to try to rob him in the house. Whose house was that? Ch Nandana Chari? No, it was a different house. He was in the house. What was that house where the big guards came and the, I forgot whose house it was. Anyway, they were trying to rob. Nityananda of his, some of his opulence. It's not a good idea. You see what happened to them. One night there was some, they fell asleep the first time or something. And then the second time they, first time they fell asleep, no? Second time there was, and then they woke up and they blamed each other. Oh, they want to rob them of uh, Nittai of his Pornai Shpuriya, Shaddai Shvaya Pornai Ha Bhagavan Saslayana. So, just like Ravana, he wants to take Sita, he wants to take the opulent offenders against Ram. So, the Mayavadis are like Karmanistas, also, they, they have strict faith in karma. They think that devotional service is like karma. So, there's many different types of impersonalists. especially these four or five are enumerated by Bhakti Sandra Saraswati. The Karmanishta Nindakas, they just criticize and blaspheme. Pashandi are total atheists. But sometimes they say that the demigods are all equal, everyone is equal. They simply superficially worship. I probably use the word superficial. So Mahaprabhu has come and giving, they, he is the lamp of Nabadvi, promoted under Saraswati described. He's like the lamp burning with the wick of pure love. And when the Mayavadis, all these types come, Nindaka, Pashandi, Karmanishta, Paduya Dham, they all like moths flying into the flame and their philosophies are destroyed. Just like those Buddhists. They're big, big, they're not exactly, they're Mayavadis, of course. They tried to trick Mahaprabhu, such rascals. And they gave him a plate of food, who knows what was on that. What were they thinking? You're going to trick Mahaprabhu. You know? 
not a good, not a good plan. You know. So immediately this bird, big bird, you know, Garuda type bird, came and picked up a big platter. Imagine a big tully, like huge. Sometimes they're weighing like a few pounds. So the bird came, picked it up, dropped it flatly on that guru, the Buddhist guru's head. Bang! I made a huge noise. Bam! The guy fell out completely. His head was, he was smashed out right on the ground. And all those Buddhist disciples, they were so upset. Oh, sir, you, something happened. Our guru, is he dead? We don't know. You need to do something. So that's okay. Don't worry. Tell him to chant Hare Krishna. You whisper in his ear now. He'll be okay. <laughs> it's funny because I saw Bardraj doing the painting. If you see Chaitanya Tramita. So we had the marathon. So Bardraj is so super genius that he was just always talking outside and chanting or going out on Harinam or something. And Jadrani was like a, 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 like a rasa or something. Jadrani said, Bardraj, you have to do the painting. He only did like maybe two or three paintings during the marathon because he was doing the whole fate, managing the whole fate museum. So Jadarani was going, Bardraj, when are you going to do the painting? And I remember he came by the studio. I said, Bardraj, what about the painting? He said, oh, come and see. You come and see. I'm almost finished. I said, oh, you're almost finished. And there you see the great painting. You know? He just whipped it out in like four days, five days. And he said, you recognize this guy? I said, mm, it was an, there's an old man there in the front. He said, it's Krishnas Babaji. I said, oh. From memory, he did Krishna's Babaji, you know. Thinking, wow, amazing. He just stuck him in the pastime for some reason, just for fun. Actually, I was with Bhargav when we first saw Krishna's Babaji, so it had a special meaning for me because I didn't even know who's Krishna's Babaji. He's an ecstatic Prabhupada's god brother. And uh, a bunch of Gaudiya Math Sannyasis and Brahmacharya, only six or seven, and they're in those days in Mayapur, there was not many visitors. Well, Bhartra said, there's Krishna Swabaji. But So immediately, there was so effulgent sticking out amongst these other sannyasis. So I had some meaning for me. He put it in there. So when they chanted Hare Krishna to their guru, they became the guru of their so-called guru. Bhakti Sanatha Sarabhati said. So Lord Chaitanya Para, Chaturya Para, he's creating so many tricks. How to trick, trick us? Just like Prabhupada said, I have tricked you all. Just like I said, Prabhupada said, I have tricked you all. I said, give up gambling. But you have taken the biggest gamble with your whole life and given it to Krishna. You don't know what's going to happen. You're going to die. You don't know what will happen. He said, this is half joking, but he said, so we don't really give up gambling. This is anasakta yataha anasakta. This is Krishna Sambandha. In relation with Krishna, we're gambling our life away. As Prabhupada said, according to astrologers, he could have been rich like Burla or something. Prabhupada was so intelligent, probably so. Somehow it didn't work out. He was quoting from Bhagavatam about that. But so, but you can see, without any effort, Prabhupada came and said, I was just one old man coming, and then I established all this. I had no thing. I had not. Just like he said, we went to the Fisher Mansion, they wanted three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Prabhupada said, "I did not have three paisa, three paisa." <laughs> and he asked them to donate. They said, "Oh no, we cannot do that." So we got it then. He said, "Our Ambarish and Lake Shivanti, they came and paid." So Prabhupada was like on this track of totally depending on Krishna. And um, so anyway, so so many tricks are there, Mahaprabhu. Again and again, tricking with his Maha Tejo Prakash. Okay, so any discussions on this? My buddies. Yeah, that's another thing. A brother and. Huh? Cousin. But this is a def that's a different story when he brought this poet. But this is, this, is, this, is not, this is not the same one, because there was somebody else who brought, but then Bhagavanacharya brought his cousin. Or so. So but this Bengali was not his cousin, he was? Yeah, yeah, he's from, he's from where? 
Benares. So he was. Yes. So he didn't get past the introduction. Different than Rupa Goswami, when he gave his introduction, Shudanam, Chandrinam, Api, Madhurimam, Maradamani, Dadana, Radhari, you know, he ecstatic. And then the next verse immediately was, Anarapita, Chirim, Charat, Kuranavat, Kiyunakalo, which Kaviraj Goswami quoted in the beginning of Chitra So this is such a great verse. Sada, Hidi, it may Mahaprabhu with his splendor be in, in your heart, appear within all your hearts. But Mahaprabhu didn't take it. He said, no, you have destroyed your nice pole, your great palais now with a detestable poison, alkali. What is this? <laughs> Just like he's saying, Vishnu, Vishnu, don't say this, don't say this. <laughs> Nobody agreed with that. But Chaitanya was always taking this humble position, like with these Prakashananda sitting in the... He's sitting by the foot wash. But uh, we might sit by the foot wash also, but we won't be able to exhibit the Mahal Tejo Maya. We don't have foot wash. If you go to <laughs> Amritsa, if you go to the Golden Temple, they have a foot wash. You have to... I, I went there in 77. You have to wash your feet. What? Foot wash? Nobody knows of the foot wash? Uh, many temples have a foot wash area, but in Amritsar they have a very nice foot wash, and, but they allow you to go in if you have clean socks with a label. You can wear your sock. Can't be used, can't be washed, it has to be new. <laughs> All right, so anything else? Anything else? Say that. Haranya Pandit's house, yes, yes, yes. It was Haranya Pandit's house where they tried, and the final, in the end, there were these huge, the last incident, there was huge bodyguards standing with weapons, incredible weapons, and marching in front of the house. And they were all like six foot six. And the dacoits were thinking, oh my God, we're never going to do anything. The head dacoit just surrendered finally. Then no. <laughs> <laughs> a rich man okay. not him couldn't be he's just an other dude how is he getting all this <laughs> anyway okay so anything here yes Prabhu. Um, so when Mahaprabhu said himself that you know I'm not Krishna you know and you know I'm part part and parcel of Krishna like everybody else but their followers followers you know consider him as a as a Krishna's avatar so what what why is there a discrepancy when Mahaprabhu Because is... Chanak Kalo Yadabhavastri go to Satwam. He's covered. In uh, Prahlad's prayer, if you read that in the in uh, <clears throat> seven canon ninth chapter, one of his prayers is very famous. And the last line it says, Chanak Kalo Yadabhavastri go to Satwam. Itam the theory of It's a long very nice verse. How Krishna appears in three yugas. And he, he appears to kill all the demoniac persons and uh, in many incarnations he appears uh, as a human, as a demigod, as a fish, as an animal, bird, so many things. And, but, Chanakalo, Yarabha Triyugo to Satvam, he's appearing, but he, Chanakalo, it's there. In Kala Yuga he's covered. Chana means covered. So he's always, he can cover and uncover at his desire any time. Just like in his Navadri pastime, sometimes he's appearing, and even in Puri, he's giving universal form. Advaita saw universal form, and uh, Sarvabhama saw, you know, this, and Ramananda saw Radha Krishna, and the six on form. All these things are appearing one after another. So in their mind, there's no question, they know. And during the Mahaprakash, he also was appearing as Vishnu. He sat on the throne of Vishnu. So, but when he wants to cover again, everyone 
by his Mahatejo Maya, Naham Prakasha Sarvasha. If he doesn't want you to know it, then you won't, re you won't, just like Krishna appears in, in his mouth, Madhya so is seeing everything. And then she's like completely overwhelmed herself, all the ma cosmic manifestation. And after a second, Krishna covers her and she's, oh, he's close. Don't, don't eat dirt, in, dirt anymore. And again, she's absorbed in the leave like that. Oh. <laughs> Varam Deva Moksha Moksha. In all these verses from Dhammadar, we, we hear about that, that he's exhibit, he, in his belly, the last verse, that rope, in his belly is everything, but still Madhya Soda is tying him with that rope. You know, she doesn't think that this is the entire you know, Galoka and everything is in his belly, the material world, spiritual world. So although he can appear and covers, he can say, appear immediately, you'll think, yes, whoa, yes. Just like those persons just before this, they were thinking, he's a sannyasi. But now when we read the next few slokas, they're all praising him. He's not, he's not different from than, uh, Krishna from Vrindavan. So all, it changes. You can't keep up with it. <laughs> he's covering them. And then he's uncovering and when, at his whim, at his will. It's a leela, it's a play. He's playing, he's playing around. You know? he's, this is Ananta Leela. Namo Deva Damo Dara Ananta. Vishnu, he's Ananta, he has Ananta Leela. If guitar gun is just verses without purport, does it convert an impersonalist to a personalist just because? Well, you it see, comes you answer that one because you read it so many times. I didn't read in Bengali. You tell him. Uh, yeah. To me, uh, guitar gun is more than sloka. It's not sloka. It's a, like a very simple, uh, heartfelt, meaningful, uh, like a purport and sloka together. Is guitar gun, I would say. This is my own observation. Okay, Hare Krishna. Christopher Combs says, Super sweet morning program, nice class. Thank you.